Hello to everyone watching, and it's a shame we couldn't meet in person, but I'd like to thank Ilya and the organisers for making it happen. My name's Adrian Wielden from the Microsystems Group at Newcastle University, uh, research low power and low energy circuits, and today I'd like to introduce you to the Setlin machine. This is a novel AI architecture using propositional logic and reinforcement learning. It originates from Center for AI Research at the University of Agder, Norway. And at Agder, they develop software and they're researching large machine learning problems for the Settler machine, uh, which are looking at disease outbreaks and text categorization and they managed to achieve state-of-the-art accuracy in MNIST also with the selling machine architecture. Here at Newcastle we're interested more in the hardware side of things. We're interested in low power and pervasive systems and smaller problems. And during my talk um, I will talk about the motivation of settling machines and then the principles of what does a settler machine look like and then how we implement that in hardware and the challenges that we're facing. Finally I can present some preliminary results. So the applications that we're looking at are pervasive AI workloads, uh, edge nodes, wearable applications, um, on-chip learning and inference uh, where we want to reduce the inference latency by doing the inference on the chip rather than sending the data to the cloud and waiting for results back. We think we'll be able to apply this uh, natural language processing and health monitoring. So how does the Settling machine enable these things to happen? Well, it's based around propositional logic, which uh, uses logic expressions as building blocks. This uh, leads to a minimalistic inference hardware, as we'll see later on. And for the learning side, we're using reinforcement learning with uh, learning automata. The, this is less expensive than what you might be used to with your neural network backpropagation, for example. This reinforcement work learning is what can lead us to low area and low energy learning, enabling the on-chip learning. And something else settling machines are good at is making decisions easy to understand compared to neural networks. So what does a settling machine look like? Let's have a look at the architecture. Here we can show a simple classifier. The clauses and voting make up the inference part of the architecture and the learning automata do the learning. This block makes up one classifier. The output of this classifier shows the confidence that the classifier has in that the input belongs to this class. Uh, but for most problems we have multiple classes so we can add more classifiers into the architecture. And we can use an argmax block then to w f figure out which, which class has the highest confidence and therefore which is the most probable class for the given inputs. So looking at the inference blocks, clauses and voting. A clause is a piece of prop propositional logic. This a composition of and clauses. So that the things that we can potentially compose the clause of are all the inputs to the classifier and their complements. So we're basically 
building an AND equation of some of the inputs or all their complements. And I'll show an example of this later on. So we use many clauses in the settling machine and each has a vote. So for any given class, we have a bunch of clauses. Half of them uh, can give an approving vote, and half of them can give an inhibitory vote. And together, these these votes give the, the class confidence. So let's look at an example with a, a, the XOR problem. So we can compose our clause here of A and not B. So this clause is approving of A and not B, the, the logic equation. And we can, we can also give an inhibitory clause, which votes against A and B. And, and these will be input to our voting system. Uh, we can also make up two more clauses uh, to, to complete our, our XOR system, which would, for example, approve of not A and B, and inhibit not A and not B. So moving on to the, the learning of the Settling machine. This is where we look at the learning automata. And to start the the inputs and their complements that I was talking about earlier, we refer to these as literals, and each literal is controlled by a unique automata, a unique learning automaton, which has the job of composing these clauses. So each automaton has an internal state which will decide whether to include or exclude the literal from the clause, or in other words, whether we connect that literal to the AND gate, or we don't connect it. And the automaton is influenced by penalty and reward. And the penalty and reward is given based on the overall state of the machine, and some stochasticity. Now this stochasticity ensures that the automata learn diversely. Uh, without any stochasticity, all the automata would learn in the same pattern and the clauses would become equivalent. So we need this to, to make sure that the clauses learn diversely. Now, how can we implement a settling machine in, in hardware? Well, the things that I've shown so far actually look quite close to hardware already. Looking at how we can compose the literal, the compose the clause, sorry, out of the literals, uh, what we can do is take the action given by the automaton for a particular literal, and we can use that action, let's say action alpha 1 means no connection, exclude the literal from the clause, then we can use that as an input to the OR gate, which will force the input of the AND gate high to mask the literal from, from the clause since AND is zero indicating the output of the AND gate will only change when the input when one of the inputs transitions from one to zero so this this OR gate creates a, a mask for the, for the literal So we'll, we'll do we'll replicate the, the OR gate for each literal for a given clause. For the, the voting system, each clause generates a one-bit output, as we've seen previously. And these can be accumulated as approving and as inhibitory votes or voting for, voting against a uh, specific AND equation. Uh, these could be some uh, as a one bit summation or as a population count. And then we can find the difference of these to give the, the cl class confidence overall. Um, some literature already exists uh, on population count. Uh, this is something 
that can benefit us when designing our hardware. Now looking at the automata that make up our system, this can simply be an up-down counter with some threshold to tell us whether we want to choose action 1 or action 2, whether we want to include or exclude the literal from the clause, whether we want to connect or not connect the literal to the AND gate. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this kind of circuit can be easily gated if the state uh, remains unchanged, so that will save us some power. So next I want to discuss some of the challenges we have with the Setlet machine. Uh, the first thing is the stochasticity. So currently we're using linear feedback ship registers in the hardware, which are okay. But some questions we have is that we're looking at how much stochasticity do we actually need in, in, in the system. And, and how can we generate that? Can we generate that differently from LFSRs? We think here there's some room for innovation here where, where we can reduce our size and power quite significantly. Uh, another challenge is, is on the hyperparameters for the settling machine. So some of the hyperparameters we deal with are the number of clauses we have in the machine and how many states does each automaton have. Uh, these are di dictated by the hardware. We can only inst instantiate a certain number of clauses or have a certain number of states in our automata. But there's also some learning rates involved. Uh, obviously, the, the, the clauses and the states we want to minimize as much as possible in order to reduce our hardware size and power. But the learning rates uh, don't affect the hardware size so much, so, and the, these are easier to vary. Um, as you can imagine, these hyperparameters can vary greatly depending on the problem that we're trying to solve. So we're using uh, FPGA's implementation of the Settlin machine to explore and to, to optimize for a given problem. So with the FPGA, we can mimic the stochasticity of our custom hardware exactly, which is important for final tuning of the, of the Settlin machine. Um, although we can use this, the software uh, implementation of the Settlin machine to give a ballpark uh, idea of accuracy and such for a given problem, but the FPGA uh, also speeds up optimization significantly because it means we can we can do a parameter sweep in in minutes rather than in days. So finally, I'd like to share some preliminary, preliminary results. Um, you can see a, a picture here of our ASIC that we've recently taped out in the 65 nanometer process, which is expected back in June, but who knows in the current climate. Um, so our ASIC results uh, come from high confidence simulations uh, since we don't have the chip back just yet. Um, the the ASIC is, can has an accuracy that's comparable to the software implementation. You know, it's within uh, 0.1% on on a given problem for the software implementation, which is expected. Um, the only real difference is in how the stochasticity is generated in the hardware compared to in the software. Um, we've we've compared the training on a single board computer, Ras Raspberry Pi for example, and uh, we can we can train with a power, with th three orders of magnitude less power in our ASIC than in the single board computer, and also the training time is reduced by two orders of magnitude. So this gives us some motivation for developing the custom hardware. And also in the applications that we're looking at, the physical size of the device is going to be a, a big factor too. Uh, we're, we're also looking at uh, picojoules of energy per data point processed, which is quite promising. Unfortunately, like-for-like -like comparisons are a bit difficult at the moment to other AI architectures, uh, but this is something that we're working on. So thank you for listening, and I'm open to any questions and discussions. Uh, 
uh, by the conference platform if, if that's available. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, you can always email me directly at adrian.wielden at ncl.ac.uk. And you can find more information about the Settler Machine at our website, uh, minion, minion.ai, or also at the University Agdares AI website, cair.uia.no. Thanks very much.